Hi everyone, welcome to Hewitt Home, I'm Tracy Koga. We were so happy to have live theatre back again. Congratulations to Artistic Director Kelly Thornton of Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre for a stellar year. They wind up with The Rez Sisters, written Thompson Highway. I sit down with director Tracy Nepenak and, of course, some of the cast. So let's find out more about The Rez Sisters. I definitely would be rather at the Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre with all of these wonderful actors and director of The Rez Sisters, but the next best thing, virtual. And we're all used to it, so I want to welcome Tracy, Kelsey, Katie, and Ashley, and I'm just saying those names as according to what I see on my screen in the boxes, but hey, that's the way this all rolls. But it is the Rez Sisters closing off the Royal MTC season, uh, people back in the theaters. I'm gonna go to the director, Tracy Nepenak. What has it been like to be back? And I guess, you know, you probably have been back in some way, shape, or form, but uh, to really be back, what has it been like? Uh, it's um, it's different <laughs> coming back. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot more challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to go back to normal is just, uh, I think we have to like forget about that because everything is so different now. Mm -hmm. uh, not not just not just because of COVID, but but I think um, <clears throat> how we how we interact in the theater community <clears throat> on stage, like er everything has changed uh, because of the pandemic, because of the race riots, uh, because of the the indigenous issues that have come to light in the last two three years. It's just uh, a, a different space to be in. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so um, normally, I Tracy, I'd let you tell you, I'll let you divulge the whole story about the Rez Sisters. But hey, let's let's go to the characters, the actress, the actors themselves. So, Katie, a little bit about the Rez Sisters and your character. Uh, so, the Rez Sisters is a story about a group of uh, of sisters that um, find out about a big bingo that they all want to go to. <laughs> And um, it just kind of goes into everyone's worlds and everyone's stories about who they are and where they come from and why they want to go to the bingo. Um, I play the role of Annie Cook, and uh, I love singing and being on the stage and performing. And uh, that's that's my goal is to be on stage and perform as much as possible. <laughs> so that's where I come from. <laughs> and what about you, Kelsey? Who is your character? Hi, I play, my name's Kelsey Canatton Wavy, and I play Emily Dictionary. Emily is a tough talking, hard shell biker chick <laughs> who um, has moved back to Wasagekin Hill, the Res, um, in the Res Sisters, um, after experiencing a little bit of trauma, and she's um, looking to start a new page in her life. Um, yeah, and it's been it's been awesome to explore this character. I am, um, you know, I, in my own personal life, I'm quite a softy, so it's nice to like explore um, these more rough and tough edges of this character, um, especially within the, within this play that has like such incredible defined characters. I would say like that's one of the best things about the play is how each character is so clear and has their own point of view and it's been really fun playing with these ladies. Oh, incredible. And how about you, Ashley? Uh, yes, so hello, my name is Ashley Cook and I play the role of Jibunigan Peterson. Um, the way I view Jibunigan's uh, role in the show is a coming of age story for Jibunigan. Jibunigan um, is described in the character notes in the play uh, as mentally disabled, 24 years old, and childlike. Um, she lives with her adopted mother um, throughout the play. Um, and so the way I view her story is she starts on one end, she lives with her mother, she's not very independent. Um, and then she goes to the city, travels with all of 
Um, I'm calling them aunties, even though the word auntie isn't said in the play. <laughs> I think that's more of a 2022 sort of like lingo there, but I keep thinking of them as the aunties or as aunties. Um, so she goes on this journey, embarking on this journey. And by the end of it, she's got a job and is a little bit more traveled. And she, I think she's on her way somewhere, somewhere new. Well, and that's not the first time I've heard aunties. You're right. It might be, uh, but you know what? It is so fitting, especially for women these days too, as as to have like the support system of like like an aunt and someone that you can confide in. Tracy, I, I, an amazing group of actors that you've got. I know probably an incredible experience, but this story now, and you had just mentioned in the opening in this time, um, you know, COVID and everything that has come up with for Indigenous people. It, this story is very important and I think it, it kind of brings some, some hope to as well at the same time. Tracy? Yeah, I think so. I, what I, what I, I, I saw this, this play when it first came across Canada and, and it actually inspired me to um, to pursue a career in theater. I, I, I'd stumbled into a theater company and I thought, well, that's not realistic. Like there's, there's not really a whole lot of indigenous roles out there. And, um, <clears throat> so, um, seeing that play on, I think it was the MTC warehouse at the time. And that was like over 30 years ago. Um, I, I it, it gave me the opportunity like to see to see my face on stage and and yeah this is possible um and in the 30 years since then not a whole lot has changed um there there, there are more theater roles out there but um you know it's far and few between few and far between um but this play is so iconic and and you know it was it was special back then but like even now i think more than ever um in i was really it was really important to like understand like these the 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 perspectives that these women um the 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 struggles that they have are more um more uh, more matriarchal based um they're they're like at the root of all of these women is their their sense of community and they are like the the caregivers of the community and so i think that was like the the one thing that i really wanted to like dig down deep and and for all of the the cast to to, to really understand like the women's perspective I mean, it was it was written by a man, Thompson Highway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but but uh, you know, there there's so much truth in 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 their characters when you look at uh, the struggles that that women have today, um, and how how much how or how little it's changed like in thirty years. So, and that's um, um, that's a sad commentary. <laughs> I mean. You know, in, in that instance, I mean, you have all of these wonderful actors here and they can probably name on, on one hand or, or maybe two hands on instances in their own daily lives that they can relate to with their characters. Right, Tracy? For sure. Yep. Oh, yes. Well, and I'll throw it out to, to Katie and Ashley and Kelsey. Oh, what, I guess, really resonates with you personally, with your own character, Katie. Uh, for for me personally, this is the first time that I've ever played an, uh, an indigenous role uh, in professional theater, and so that um, was a, a big deal for me because, um, and, and it surprised me too. It coming to that because there should be more. Um, roles out there, there should be more plays out there, that, but there just isn't, and um, so it was really exciting in that capacity, and um, uh, things that resonate with Annie, she's fast-talking, she, uh, <laughs> that's, that's me to a T, um, she loves, and she loves people hard, and that's also something that I carry with me, and um, she uh, loves being around 
uh, all of the women that are in her life, and that's something that um, I was so excited. This is only a part of our cast. We have so many other wonderful, incredibly talented women um, and, and people in our cast that, uh, that aren't on the screen, and it was just so exciting to have this little part of a community to spend time with and to be with. Um, and mothers. There's so many mothers in our cast. <laughs> and it was so exciting to have so many women who have children and so many people who have children in our cast. That's something that I haven't experienced in theater before. And um, it, it was just really uh, uh, exciting and invigorating. And it's something that I'm trying to share with like everyone I come in contact with just to say like it is it is a thing. It is possible. It just needs a different support system. And this this is the support system that um, that we're able to do it in. Aww. Awesome. Um, Kelsey, you had mentioned that, you know, normally you're kind of the, you know, the shy person or whatever, and you're kind of, <laughs> by the sounds of it, you play a biker chick or, you know, someone that's rough and tough. But talking about... I hope I would say shy by any means. <laughs> well, okay, but... yeah, well, not shy, but just, you know, the softy. I think the softy is what you use, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how did you kind of dig dig in deep into your soul and, and become this other character, Emily? Well, I think one of the things I really connected with with Emily when I first read the play, um, you know, she's been away from home for a really long time. And I think that journey of what it is to come back and be with your family, be around your kin and be in community and finding your way back back into what those relationships are um, was something that I really sunk my teeth into. Um, I personally, I've never, I never grew up on the Reds. I grew up as an urban Indigenous person here in Winnipeg on Treaty 1. Um, but I have um, been away from home for a while. And every time I come back to Winnipeg, there is a community. There is a very strong Indigenous community here. And so it's very easy for me to like just remember of how awkward it can be to like see family that you haven't seen in a long time, how, like the reflections on how much you've changed. And like Tracy said, all the things that still haven't changed and need to continue to be worked on. Um, so that was really, really um, fun for me to dive, dive in and connect with yeah. that journey of coming home, coming back to community and starting fresh. Yes. And that's something that a lot of us, and dear to you know want to have and 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 hope to have that opportunity Ashley for you being vulnerable and like you said uh you know growing up not with your mom so to speak um how was that kind of delving into the whole character of, of for you what I really loved about playing this character is well, I'll take it back to the root of the way Jabunigan is written. And one of my favorite pieces of acting advice that I got during my training was that to never say my character would not. Like, your character could do anything in the right circumstances, and I think we all could. Um, and the way Jabunigan is written, going from the very first page of the Red Sisters book, the published book, is mentally disabled, 24 years old, the adopted daughter of Ronique St. Pierre. Um, and then she just does all these wild things <laughs> written out in the stage directions. And I'm like, I could never expect this person to do any of those types of things. Um, like she's really, she's vulnerable, but she's really tough. And she's resilient and she's been through a lot, but she's not, um, she's, she's not a caricature. She's not a stereotype and she doesn't wear her trauma on her sleeve every day of her life. And I don't think, I don't think most people really do. So I'm just really glad that she was written as a well-rounded character. And I felt like I could really tap into that. No, oh, it's such an amazing opportunity. And Tracy, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Thompson wrote Jabunigan about himself. Because <laughs> Thompson is, is he's, he's an incredible man, an incredible writer, but He's feisty and he and he's got a great sense of humor. So uh, when Ashley was talking about her character, I was totally seeing Thompson in that one. But anyways, okay, stay. I think stay. he's, a, I think he's yeah. a, a little bit of every one of them. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. No, I'm. Uh, and take it, you know, kudos to him. But nobody else, right, could have written something like this. Only, only he could in his own masterful way. But uh, 
Anyways, it is the Res Sisters at the Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre on until May 28th. These ladies are going to be back, coming back momentarily. But we're going to leave you right now with a great interview from the Winnipeg Women's Conference held way back in March. I know it seems like a long time ago, but the interviews were amazing. And this time we sit down with Kate Holden, and she is the title of Wine Queen of Canada. And after you hear the interview, you'll understand why. So don't go away. This is Hugh at Home. Girl, you know what's up. So I've spent a lot of time working on my just my personal brand of figuring out my entrepreneurial journey. One level extra, the wine queen. But I uh, own and operate Deluca Fine Wines. We're just about to go through a major rebrand, so that is really exciting. But we've had the business now for like 14 years, so it's been an incredible journey of learning, building, scaling um, to bring us here today. So, what do you think, uh, Kate? Is it about what you have, your skill set, that really kind of has made this a really like a storybook kind of journey? So I'm a one of, for me, I'm a strategic thinker. I have a vision. I'm definitely, as my hashtag would say, one level extra. But I'm, I spend a lot of time building experiences, and I think there's a huge tie-in with wine. Um, because wine is about moments and every wine tells its story but wine is meant to be shared with friends and family and everybody remembers that one bottle of wine that they've been on vacation or in a winery so that experiential vibe there's a real synergy between that and wine and I feel like that's where our store really wins in delivering the overall ex experience in terms of product knowledge but just the welcoming taking the pretentiousness out of wine and making it about learning and experiences and just enjoyment. And if you can't, women, uh, we do like our wine, like we like our chocolate, like we like fashion mm -hmm. and all things beauty, beautiful like art. Uh, if you look at an event like this today, Kate, where do you see it kind of expanding in the future? I mean, no. Women, we constantly want to grow, we constantly want to learn. What more? What's going to take this to the next level? In terms of the conference? Yes. Yeah. So I, I mean, I obviously I would love to see even more women. This is a sold out conference. So I would obviously, when I think about how, I look at how we elevate everything. <laughs> so <laughs> <No>. <laughs> even more speakers, even more people, even more, um, you know, luxury brands. and spending time getting women together and just spending some time on themselves and the time putting in the work to strategically think about what they want out of life that's just something so simple most of us as women know what we don't want we, but we can get easily sidetracked of what we do want from people that have you know limitations and expectations of what they want for us so to bring a bunch of women together to spend the day together is just a really incredible Thing that we should celebrate but I, I feel like we can grow it even bigger and have more breakout sessions where we actually do workshops and we just do the work and support and empower one another so that we can get sort of our life by design the best out of our life living that one percent 
And you do sit on a lot of boards, the president and of EO and on the national board too as well. And the philanthropic side of being the chair for Dream Factory. Kate, is this something that is innate in you or do you think that it is important as women that we need to be involved in business but also in your community? Absolutely. Um, my breakout session today was on sort of the four quadrants, business, community, um, family, and self. And where we show up in our community is really important. And not just my community in terms of my peers and EO and being an entrepreneur. Um, I learn every much as what I get from that. I, I give back to that because it's taught me to be a better entrepreneur, a better leader. In terms of Dream Factory, I feel like women should be involved. One of my core values is to give back. Um, and Dream Factory just... It gives sick, sick kids that have life-threatening illnesses their dreams. They really feel that what it keeps me grounded. It gives me perspective. It's a reminder of that everyone doesn't have the same journey that you do. And I think women should really think about where they show up in their community. It's really important. And as an entrepreneur, does your brain ever shut off? <laughs> No. I'm, I'm <laughs> no. I know. I know. No. I often say that. I say yes more than I ever say no. But I can honestly say my brain does not shut off. I'm, and I'm a terrible sleeper. <laughs> but I think that's true of most entrepreneurs. So what inspires you? What inspires me the most is just elevating what we currently have, what, what we do, taking it to the next level. I really look to live that sort of 1% life, to extract all the value, that life by design. I really want to be more intentional about my time, hold myself accountable to the goals that I have, and spend more time thinking about um, where I show up in my life. So if Kate Holden had the chance to look in her crystal ball five years from now, where will you be? I will definitely have found probably an, another business venture to be involved in. One of my friends, we are going to be on a rebranding journey with our wine store, so I'm very excited about that. Um, one of the things that uh, can, can get me a little bit complacent is um, it's government regulated. So as much as the wine store seems like this great sexy business, it's government regulated, so it kind of stifles creativity. So I always look for that exponential business where there you can see not just incremental growth but exponential growth so it's somewhere I haven't figured it out yet but it's coming so the hive is a climbing and fitness facility so we're bouldering only which means no ropes or harnesses we use mats for protection but the four pillars of our business are climbing education health and wellness and community and those aspects all kind of come together to create like a five-star climbing experience. Welcome back. It is Hugh at home and I have part of the wonderful cast of the Res Sisters currently on at Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre and I'm going to go with the director now again, Tracy. Tracy, uh, you know what? You've been in front of the camera, behind the camera, live theater, TV, movies, directing. Is that something that is you can have right at the top of your list now or or not? I don't know, but uh, yeah, what was it what is it like being director? <laughs> um this has been like a, a very crazy ride. Um, I kept saying uh, Nana Bush is alive and well. Um, I think it, this is under, this hasn't been like a normal directing job, I think. The uh, day, day before rehearsals, I got COVID. Um, we had people dropping out. So recasting across the country, uh, just, Almost every day there was like some kind of challenge, so so it, it's been really difficult. And, and what I what I'm so so happy to to have been uh, to to have played this part uh, a, a role in, in Stratford last summer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was really familiar with the show, but uh, we we didn't have a whole lot of time. And and I hope that um, that I had enough 
background information about like each of the characters just to to be able to to get the show on stage for opening and um it, it's it's been uh it's been racked with a lot of uh challenges but it's a beautiful show and uh i have a beautiful cast and um you know, just kudos to them for like being able to like get it to get it on stage <laughs> when we did because it's uh, it was really challenging. Um, oh, yeah. And I, I don't know. Uh, I think I prefer being on stage, uh, but this directing this show has been like a, an honor of a lifetime. Just it's it's such an iconic play, mm -hmm. and I've seen so many different versions of it, and and I was so fortunate to have. RMTC give me the opportunity to like put my uh, my my interpretation of it on stage. Oh yes, that that is always so good. Yeah, so COVID, theaters dark for two years, everything on Zoom, virtual, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're on stage. What has it been like, Kelsey, in front of? A thousand eyeballs um, now looking at you. <laughs> it's been awesome. It's been it's been like I I love being on stage. I love performing, um, and I love diving into a script and playing with other actors. So that's it's been nice to be. I've actually had the privilege of working on a few shows during the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, in different capacities, whether it's like acting, directing, doing some writing work. Um, so I felt like pretty pretty ready to get back out there, like chomping at the bit a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, it was definitely challenging to come back. I feel like there's still a lot of structures that exist in the theater community that we need to continue to dismantle, like just really intense work hours that after COVID and having that break, it made me realize like, oh, like we really need as a, like, um, as a sector to come together and just make more equitable hours for each other. Um, because I feel like if I learned anything from COVID, it's like burnout doesn't help anyone. And I feel like with some of the structure in place, there there is a there is a huge risk for that. And I'm really grateful for this cast because we're all really good at taking care of each other and making sure, like just checking in, making sure everyone's healthy and doing well. And um, but other than that. Um, it's been really lovely to be in front of an audience again. Um, and yeah. Wow. Oh, that is, that is so interesting, uh, because, well, my former background too was in the entertainment or arts and culture too, as well in the dance world. And I, I understand the long hours that you go through. And Tracy, don't don't take this personally, but you know the the director there and doing saying again, again, <laughs> again, and you going, I don't have anything left. Um, <laughs> so that that's interesting. So Katie too, because you do have your own company too. Uh, how do you nurture the next generation with all of this information, social media, you know? Uh, getting yeah anybody's opinion <laughs> it's been wild I um I mean the best part about the company that I work for is it's kids um, and they are a lot smarter than I find a lot of adults are and so they already have ideas of how to make these changes mm -hmm. and um, how to dismantle the things that that we all talk about mm -hmm. so um, it's I, I'm very privileged to work with them because they are helping me find paths that I uh, don't necessarily have uh, right in front of me. So, um, but I think continuing the dialogue and talking about the challenges, um, I think anytime I work in a theater space, I, I, I'm very open with my experience and about the things that I experience so that they are aware of what it currently is and how we can make those changes and how like, um, I, I like bringing kids into theater. It was a thing that I wish I knew I could do as as a young mom. Like I didn't know, and we had a kid in our rehearsal hall, and it's just things like that that like we just if we need talk about it more, then people are more aware of the things that we can do and that we can ask for, and um, that we can 
uh, create these spaces that we do really want to continue to be in. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is I just talk with them and then they tell me what to do and then I go out there and I hopefully make changes so that when they get here they're like okay now here's the next thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know your job is never done oh mm -hmm. my goodness but yeah kids can be uh, like a breath of fresh air and just kind of like oh okay you know a check again on, on yeah. what you need to really think about and what's important um, Ashley for you a young actress coming up roles indigenous roles and you know what I, I don't even want to talk like Indigenous because anybody should be able to audition for any role regardless of what they look like, their beliefs, or whatever. Um, so Tracy said, this play is still relevant or whatever. We're still having issues in 30 years. How far have we come for you? Um, for me, uh, well, I started acting in Winnipeg 14 years ago, um, and back then there weren't any really roles happening for um, Indigenous actors or actors of colour, like for characters that were written mm -hmm. uh, to be cast that way. And I just didn't see myself represented in Winnipeg, so I ended up leaving to Vancouver for about five years. Um, during which time there was, there's been some changes um, in terms of the artistic leadership in Winnipeg. And now I'm starting to see more of these roles like um, Thompson Highway's Red Sisters being a really safe bet for MTC to hopefully continue to stage more Indigenous work on the main stage um, and keep this going and keep our talent that is born here. There's a lot of Winnipeg actors that are born here that travel to Vancouver, Toronto or LA to train elsewhere and then they end up staying there. Um, because there just hasn't been a lot of investment in Indigenous storytelling here in the city for quite a long time. So I'm hoping that this is a sign that we're turning over a new leaf. And I'm really glad that we're on the main stage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, most definitely. Tracy, I guess too, uh, your words of uh, wisdom. How far have we come? I know we still have a lot more to go. Uh, but like, when is it gonna be, okay, yes, we need stories. We need Indigenous stories. We need to educate. But when can it just be a level playing field? Or will that ever come? I, I hope that will happen one day. Um, but I, uh, like, I think we need, we, we still need, like, um, a helping hand, mm -hmm. uh, giving, giving me the opportunity to direct on the main stage was a big step and and i felt so supported from the community uh and and from the theater and i think the theater community was like you know they're all rooting for for me but like it's it, it's not a place that we're comfortable with yet uh, mm -hmm. well i can't speak for everybody but for for myself i i i don't necessarily feel a hundred percent welcome yet um and it's just like perhaps my comfort level but um after after covid and the race riots um now every now every all of these opportunities are, are open to us and we're just like we're not used to being here yet so um but that's me like i'm 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 older and like the 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 women that i'm that i've been working with like they're all strong powerful indigenous women who have like uh they they don't have that that history that i have i think there there's so much more awareness out there so i think um yeah it's it's important for our youth the these these ladies here they're the future <laughs> kelsey do you agree is this a time now for you katie ashley to you know come forward do it yeah, I mean, I think we're all really coming up and it's like thankful to I'm so thankful for matriarchs like Tracy, who have made this like possible and that all of all of the other people who have played these this role before, like have made this path for us. And I'm just thinking about what you said about like an even playing field. 
And I think it's just really important to continue to program Indigenous work and like allow us to have space to play. And also just continuing to, for within the theater sector, within the film sector, within every sector, it'll never be a level playing field while we're still under a capitalist white supremacy like society. So it's like we need to continue to just like, um, you know, figure out what are what are our values and and um, and in inside the rehearsal hall and outside the rehearsal hall. Yeah. So I have a question for you all. What would happen if uh, we turned the tables and um, hired or had white actors play each of your characters? And would they learn, or I don't know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say would they, but you know what it is like to delve in your character. What that kind of experience would be like? Isn't that, thought, that's what uh, Thompson Highway wrote, like, about the play in the beginning, wasn't it? That that, like, her sister should and could be played by anybody. And I think there was, like, I think there was, like, a completely non-Indigenous show that was staged in Toronto, like. Interesting. I think Japan. Oh, Japan. Because that's the, that was the idea behind it, <laughs> hoping that uh, actors um, of all creeds and nations could learn what it would be like to be part of a community like this. And I think that they... Anybody playing these roles would have a real deep appreciation by the end of it for the community that the characters experience in the story and also the community that they experience um, at the lunchroom table among other actors who are also, uh, a lot of them being in similar stages of life, like mothers, new mothers, mothers that have been mothers and have grown children already, um, families who don't have children at all, and people who don't want to plan for families, but just like whole a whole community with a lot of diverse knowledge because there's a whole range of ages for these characters in the play like right from the 50s to like early 20s and it's just a really great knowledge sharing space to be in wow um you know and, and katie you can chime in on this your thoughts i <laughs> it's yeah, it's a really big question that you asked until there until there are like until there's lots of space made for all of the people I don't think we should be like potentially talking about Caucasian people playing roles that like that they I, I'm sorry this is just yeah. such a big 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 question to just mm -hmm. like shoot out and answer mm -hmm. I want to see more indigenous people on the stage I want to see more um IBPOC people on the stage and so when I hear like how about we put some other people in those roles that I, I it makes me a little like oh I don't think <laughs> no. that's we should no. keep moving towards the direction yeah. of keeping IBPOC faces on the stage because I think that's where we need to be right now but um yeah, but, <laughs> but, the, same, but the same goes <laughs> that, you know, we'll, we could put, you know, Indigenous and BIPOC people in all of those mainstream roles that, you know, oh, like sure, a yeah. gajillion, That's, yes, of, yes, time. no, yeah. For sure, for sure. And, yeah, I, and I think, you know, cool. kudos to uh, Royal MTC. I believe they did that with Ro Romeo and Juliet, uh, probably about five or six or maybe even ten years ago. They did a full different spin on the cast there too as well, a different ethnicity. So, but anyways, I just threw that out there. Tracy, you have, you have last comments here. Um, you know, congratulations on your directorial debut. And it will, if this is your first one, girl, hey, you know, after you've done 25, you'll say, yeah, I can be a director. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know, after, after this one, I don't know if I'd survive 25. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't be having COVID, all right? So, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, I look forward to it. And um, yeah, seeing seeing uh, the faces here uh, taking on like more directing jobs here in Winnipeg. Like it was so it was so difficult. Like Ashley said it like the indigenous talent here just like they can't it's it's non sustainable at this time. So they have to leave and go other places and, and then we lose them. So uh, I really want to see more Indigenous talent stay here. Yes. Oh, so do we. So I want to thank you all, Katie, Kelsey and Ashley. It's been wonderful to meet you. Congratulations, the Res sisters. Uh, you know what? You know, hopefully it doesn't take another 30 years to write another play, you know, play like this. And please stay here. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's or loads of indigenous plays. We just got to stage them. There's I know. Like, oh, yes. Oh, I know. Man. Well, I got a bookshelf. Let's start yeah. writing. Let's start writing tonight, okay? On You know, right away. And let's keep all of this talent here in Winnipeg, indigenous, Please. BIPOC, all the beautiful people that bring so much and, and make our city what it is today. So thank you all. The Res Sisters on until May 28th. Thank you so much for joining us here on Hue at Home. want to give a very special thank you to all of our guests on today's show and leave you with this question. What play would you like to see in the next season at Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre? We want to know, so send us an email to hello at ilikehugh.com or message us on Facebook and Instagram at ilikehew. But for now, stay safe and healthy and we'll see you next time on Hugh at Home. Mm -hmm.